Hey everybody, it's Claudia from Live U, and I'm sitting here in the Live U studio at CES here in the Cosmopolitan. We have finally have a great view of Vegas, which we'll be showing you in a minute. It has been a foggy, wet, rainy first day of CES, but we've been having a lot of exciting things happening here in our studio today. As you know, we've been letting people take over our studio here at the Cosmo. So we've had guests from the Gadget Professor who had Panasonic on talking about their latest and greatest camera. We've had Shira Lazar with a variety of killer guests on Circa Pop Live. And now you have us. Uh, and we have some very cool customers, producers, live streamers, and YouTubers lined up to chat with you with their behind the scenes stories about live streaming. But before we get there, uh, I'll take you a little through the madness that is the Live View Studio, uh, and maybe we'll take a look at what we have here, uh, and what the gear is, what the workflow is, talk a little bit with my friend who's sitting next to me on the couch, who we'll see in a moment, uh, Paul from PTZ Optics and the cool cameras we're using, and that's giving us some of the cool angles, the different cuts that we have, uh, and we'll sort of take it away from there. So without further ado, let's go around. Yeah, let's pan. And we're going to see Ben Ratner, live streaming producer extraordinaire, and our very own Chris Perry of Live U, uh, sitting behind the desk that is the, uh, the original desk in the suite that we have taken over for the workflow. So guys, I don't know if you want to mention a little bit about some of the basic gear that is bringing everyone this live show right now, uh, or we maybe... I'll take you through it. <laughs> no, thanks, uh, thanks, Claudia. You know, and, and it's great to great to be here with everyone. Um, kind of dual roles over here with Ben and I. Ben's, we're a crew. <laughs> we're a crew. Ben, <laughs> Ben's you know over here rocking uh, New Tech TriCaster. Uh, we're using some uh, cloud graphics software to insert all of the graphics in the cloud. Uh, we've got a uh, PTZ uh, controller for all of our PTZ Optics cameras, uh, which are fabulous. Uh, so we've got the TriCaster set up here. We're broadcasting with our trusty LU600 over on the side. Yay, live you! And uh, <laughs> it's been uh, it's been quite the quite the day, as Claudia said. We've uh, how many sets have we set up today, Chris? Uh, we've done three uh, broadcasts today, including this one. Um, we've got a couple of lights here um, that we're doing a three-point lighting system. Uh, we've got microphones all over the place. So it's uh, it, it really was quite the transformation in order to get this from. A, uh, a, a hotel room, a suite, to a broadcast studio. So it's still sweet. Yeah. It, it's, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. It's got a killer view uh, that we're going to be showing you quite a bit tonight. Yeah, at least we get to take advantage of it. The, the people broadcasting earlier today, we actually had to scramble and do a whole new setup because originally we are going to have all this great ambient light, the backdrop of Vegas, and instead it was uh, you could barely see the Bellagio next door. Um, barely see the little sides of the high roller. Uh, it was all ensconced in fog. It was hysterical. Um, but, uh, but it's been a lot of fun, and we learned a lot along the way. So actually, I'd like to kick it over to Paul for a second and take us through the four cameras that we have set up here today. So we've got four PTZ Optics cameras here. We have two 12X and two 20X cameras. I think they look great. You guys did a great yeah. job color matching them <laughs> and bring them into the new tech tri TriCaster. Uh, they're all coming in, I believe, at 1080p 60, 60 frames per second, and that's streaming out to Facebook, so that's how you guys are seeing us. If you have any questions about the cameras or the tech, just give us a comment, because I think these guys are bringing in live comments through Facebook. We, of course, we want to hear from you guys. And um, the, one of the greatest things about PTZ Optics and just these, the camera setup that you guys have is you've got just two guys running the show. Mm -hmm. But we've got a four-camera setup, which might look like a ten-camera setup, because these cameras have presets. So you saw them panning and tilting along the, uh, the Las Vegas Strip. Yep. You probably see a couple different shots. And even though it may look like 10, 20 different shots, we've really just got four cameras here. And it gives Ben and Nick the ability to fade and transition between these cameras and make it look like we might have like a 20-person crew. Kind of like what you guys are doing with the live view. Right. Reducing the cost of what it used to take to have a production truck. Exactly. This is reducing what it used to take to have camera operators and reducing it all down to there's really just one camera operator here and then one producer here. Yeah, and I think that's the super cool part of it. It is. It's Chris with one joystick controller and all the cameras are linked together. I think in about yeah. five minutes before we went live, we set the presets up. Yes. So it was that easy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and, uh, and right now, I think we even just switched it around, and we might even be able to show some of the strip that we've been talking about if we can. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. And actually, we 
have this awesome terrace. It's super wet, but we'll maybe be able to go outside a little bit, if not today, but definitely tomorrow during our broadcast, and we'll do some stuff from outside there as well. Yeah, so I believe that's the 20X Optical Zoom PPZ Optics camera. They're all connected via HDMI, and then we're using RS-232 serial cabling. But uh, next time, next year for sure, we're going to set these up with Ethernet so that we can use the new tech NDI with the TriCaster, obviously. For those of you out there who use TriCasters, you may know about the NDI low latency IP video transmission system, which also includes pan tilt zoom control. Um, that would have been great here, but we're actually going kind of the old school <laughs> HDMI <This> serial. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys were going to have a network set up or a Wi-Fi unit. Uh, but if there's any questions about the cameras, or just, just let us know in the chat. We're definitely listening. But uh, we love the live view boxes, and uh, it's a great example of a way where you can just take a hotel room, turn it into a video production studio. Right. No need for internet access because, of course, you have the live view boxes. And I'm not seeing the quality myself, but I've used these before, and it just looks yeah. amazing. I mean, that, that's the biggest deal. You know, everyone's concerned at the convention center where there's massive congestion, and we have had a ton of people, including Ben earlier today, was running all over the convention center interviewing people with the solo unit yep. and just two cellular connections, and it was fantastic. Uh, here in the Cosmo, we would actually be worse off than when, if we were down in the convention center due to the height, due to the interference. So here we are actually using the LU600, uh, and that's the slightly bigger backpack unit, which a lot of our broadcaster customers out on the floor are using, and this has six cellular connections in it. But like I said, we've had people running around with just two perfectly fine, beautiful, high-quality streams. For us, this was, we knew no matter what we had in here, like we earlier today when none of our gear showed up, thank you, UPS and Vegas CES, um, and we had one camera, one light, we knew it didn't matter because we were going to be able to get that stream out. And that's ultimately it. It's that reliability that you can pretty much go live from anywhere, anytime, regardless of the, of the setup. Uh, and I think we're going to hear a lot more stories like that behind the scenes of people who have brought their live view just as that extra backup and it's wound up saving their butts once or twice. Yes. <laughs> okay. now, the, the one thing I will say about starting to use the live view is that a lot of people when they're doing live streaming, they're thinking about going into a studio and that's where all the magic right. happens. And it really changed my just whole perspective on what can be done now thinking I can go literally anywhere with a cellular connection and still have a reliable stream. Yeah. So it really changes the paradigms. If you've never tried these products, pick one up and give it a try because if you're a traditional broadcaster like I am who's used to going into the studio and just that comfortable place, try leaving your comfort zone for a moment and the, the, the thoughts that you'll start having about what and where and what is possible will really start to change, I think. Yeah, I think that is a perfect lead-in actually to... Oh, you want to say something? Yep, I just want to say... Oh, Go for it, Ben. I on camera. Uh, we're taking a look at your comments uh, during this and I think our most important comment so far is from Tess Protesto. Uh, uh -oh. And what she says that I'm not as cute as she is. Is that what she's about to well, say? Well, what she says is those oh, pillows are man. too cute. Uh -huh. She likes the pillows. Oh, uh, thank you. Guess who made them? I'm not only VP, I'm also crafty. So uh. thank you, Tess. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was actually just about to say, you know, this is uh, what Paul was saying is like a perfect lead-in for uh, my next guest who just joined me on the couch, Rob McWilliams. Rob Jimmy. knows and comes from extensive history in the broadcast world. Producer extraordinaire, but is really doing some killer stuff here at CES. I think you're winded because you were rushed over here after yeah. doing two events. We have, yeah, we have two. Two, two, two activations going. happening going yeah. on. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's actually specific here to CES. Yeah, well, two very different types of broadcasts, we right? We have 600 going. We're broadcasting live every day to Sydney, Australia. For um, Sky News. Sky News. Yep. And that's kind of what sold me on Live View. I've been doing... Uh, Sky News uh, for the last six, seven years here, and I come from the satellite truck world broadcast, mm -hmm. and the 600 sold me because we <clears throat> have never had one issue. That's awesome. So it's good about the connectivity, but yeah. are you able to do some different types of content because of the freedom of the pack? Oh, yeah. 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 I always, I kid that I become a live satellite truck because we're able to, <laughs> we're able, with the live view, we're able to become we're able to run and gun, yeah. throw it on my back, and do a walk and talk interview, and um, it's bulletproof. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, what is the other project or company uh, you're doing some stuff for? The other project we're doing, we're handling all the social media uh, broadcasts for National Car Rental. It's their first year at CES. 
and we're using the live use solo to go straight to <coughs> Facebook, straight social to, media. We're doing we're going through um, the Joycast mm -hmm. uh, program, so we're able to hit Twitter and Facebook at the same time. That's awesome. And again, I put it on my belt, and we're doing run and gun, walk and talk, yeah. mobile interviews. So what he's talking about is the little belt clip yep. right here. Yep. The modems are tucked inside this little elastic strap. I'm trying to show you. And he's clipped it on, and you go, right? And, and yeah. you go. Yeah. And so you're probably using a different type of camera for that than you would for... I'm using a broadcast for... camera. You are? That. Okay. Yeah. So you're using SDI. SDI and yeah. embedded audio. And uh, it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the cool things about the solo unit. It does come in two different form factors in that you do have both SDI and HDMI in one unit. We also now have a lower cost of entry HDMI only. Because when we talk a little later on to one of our YouTube visitors that's come... Uh, a lot of they, a lot of them aren't using broadcast equipment. They're using DSLRs in some cases. Yeah, They're yeah. using smaller and lighter weight cameras that are yeah. just HDMI. Yeah. We even have some folks using uh, their iPhones with an HDMI adapter to go through the solo to yeah. get the extra that's bandwidth awesome. benefit. Yeah, that's awesome. So I've seen some pictures on social that you've been yeah. sharing. Yeah. Not just the great oysters you had last night. Yeah. I was very jealous. Yeah. But uh, I also saw that, that you've got, tonight. you did bring a little help, or you hired a little local help for your crew? They're local. My three girls just moved here to Las Vegas. That's crazy. And I hired them on as uh, production assistants. So when we're running and gunning, we have uh, um, light panels, mm -hmm. and that way we're able to stay lit the whole time. Yeah. And they move with, with us, and it looks awesome. That's great. It looks yeah, awesome. And that's one of the things we, we always try to say is you don't have to be the big broadcaster with all of the equipment. Yep. But what a live view unit does allow you to do is get a better quality camera source yep. in, yep. better audio, and then we always say lighting. You know, when you have yep. those three things, it transforms your stream from what it would be on just the phone. Now believe me, I, this is not an iPhone 10. I'm a little jealous of my colleague over there who's ha got one, the pictures are fantastic. But at the end of the day, it still is not a camera source with a microphone source with great lighting and the mobility of being able to do it all even yep. if you had to do it all yourself once you can rely on great video encoding and bandwidth to stream to your destination yeah. you kind of can do it all almost yourself yeah we have a great team here i mean we even have i have my sound man with me we're running three wireless mics plus a boom wow and uh it's so how many live streams did you do today I only did one because okay. that's all we're, but with um, Sky News, we're doing like four a day. Wow, that's, yeah. excellent. Yeah. that's excellent. That's excellent. And that's two-way communication. I mean, it works great. That's fantastic. I'm sold. That's good news. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep it coming. We love seeing all your posts and your great photos. Thank you. on social so I do encourage you follow him <laughs> there's some killer behind the scenes stuff yeah. uh, and we're looking forward to telling more about your story and some of the great work you're doing yeah. uh, and some of the newer and more interesting jobs that you can get beyond traditional news let's yeah. say yeah yeah well I want to thank you guys for your support oh. you guys have been awesome because this is the first time I've used this unit and um, you guys have been rock stars. Oh, thank you, so thank you so much. Well, I can't take all that credit because I'm sure it's probably a lot of other people at LiveView that you talk to. We've got a great support team back home in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, we also have another great person here who's behind the scenes who does most of the hard work, uh, and that is our very own Joyce Essig, our influencer Hi, manager. Joyce. Hey. Your Joyce, yes. My Joyce, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Joyce yeah. keeps everybody rolling, including me. Um, but <laughs> we're going to introduce Joyce right now because we do have some killer stuff happening on social. So Joyce, you know, there's some questions going on. You want to tell people how they can interact and what maybe they can get Definitely. out of this? Absolutely. So everybody, come on down, comment, let us know what we're, you know, how we're, it's going, any live streaming questions you have. We've got the experts we'll be bringing on. And uh, you will be entered into a raffle to get some live view swag. I've got a little solo pouch with some fun stuff in it. We've got this really hot live uh, go solo sweatshirt up for grabs. So uh, I'm just going to start with one question. Jay Nero wants to know if we're using NDI. So maybe my tech guys can, uh, can let me know. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Joyce. Uh, you know, we are using NDI here. Um, we are using NDI for a demo that you're actually just about to see. We're really excited. Uh, all of the cameras that we're using today right now are HDMI, uh, but in the future we could obviously use you know, an NDI platform for that as well. So, cool. 
So just want to say hello to a few people. We've got Stuart Rivera watching, Wesley, Henry. We're going to answer your questions shortly. So keep it right here. Keep commenting, share, like, and uh, we'll, we'll answer your questions. Excellent. Thank you, Joyce. And we'll be coming back to you in a little later. Um, that cool shirt she's wearing, I also made tests, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> little iron-on action. Um, but we do have some cool giveaways, too. I think Joyce might do a little sneak peek of some of those things for your questions. But right now, I'm more excited because sitting next to me is Nick Mattingly from Switcher Studio. Uh, Nick has been a great partner. Uh, another one of the great aspects of this live streaming world are the great people we get to work with that help make that whole live stream workflow even easier and better and a better production and look like it's a million bucks without spending a million bucks. Uh, so I wanted to kick it over to you and introduce everybody to you. If they could see you, they'd, they'd, they'd see your great smile. There you are. <laughs> uh, but tell us a little bit about Switcher and, and what you've been up to lately. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so a little earlier, you spoke a little bit about using your phone yes. uh, yeah. for live video. And a lot of times you're kind of stuck with whatever you're pointing we at. We almost went all phone earlier <laughs> today, so yeah. Um, so with Switcher, we allow businesses to build their brand on social video. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a product that allows you to make videos that look like TV using iPhones and iPads. No special hardware. You pick one device that's the main switcher. And if you want another camera, you just open the app on another iPhone or iPad. So we're actually going to do a quick demo here. That's uh, awesome. And we have a really cool workflow where you can use the solution with live view. So right. if you haven't invested in traditional cameras and uh, you can't uh, jump straight to the Terra Deck, this is a great way to get started. And also works really well for ultra mobile solutions. Golf channels well, going behind the scenes uh, using Switcher. So oh, awesome. Some cool stuff happening. That's there. very cool. And exactly that. So now you're not limited to just the single connection on that iPad or iPhone if you can actually integrate in with Live View. Boost exactly. that ro robustness. But let's take, a, let's take a look at what you guys do. All right. So uh, this is the Switcher uh, interface from an iPhone or an iPad. Our friends over at Chrome Unbox are actually using this solution here at the show today. If you want to connect another camera, you just open the app on another iPhone or iPad. We've got one set up here right in front of us we're going <laughs> to use as an example. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> Thank we'll you. Move okay. that one up. <laughs> and um, we can switch between photos. We can do video bumpers. We can uh, bring in lower thirds and titles. So just with the built-in camera or one source, you can really start making much more dynamic content. Uh, again, if you want another camera, you just open the app on another iPhone or iPad. You can do up to nine sources. That's amazing. And that is truly amazing considering that's a nine camera production, what that would cost in terms of camera operators, equipment, all of the integration. It'd be <laughs> insane. But I love it because we believe at LiveView too that anyone should be able to have a high quality production that it should be in the palm of everyone's hands. It shouldn't just be for the big major broadcasters, news and sports outlets. That as long as you can invest in a modest amount of equipment, there's no reason why your stream can't look as professional. And things like being able to switch between cameras, adding graphics on, even being able to distribute to a wider audience really grows and expands your abilities as a live content producer or a brand or a, a live streamer. So what's Chrome doing here? Are they exhibiting? Are they doing some funky activations? Yeah, you know? so Chrome Unboxed has a platform where they try out everything from Google with uh, Chromebooks. Okay. And they do reviews. Um, they actually got hung up at the show floor today. There's an embargo on a new product that they got the scoop on. And they've been using Switcher from the show floor here at CES with Live View to do broadcasts. Um, they have a, a great... YouTube channel, the content is um, new every week, and mm -hmm. they have a, a really good growing audience. So really excited to have partnered with them and, and be able to showcase our products used together. Uh, for that particular workflow, they are using an iPad, and you can get an adapter mm -hmm. for your iPhone uh, that goes from Lightning to HDMI. It's like so, 50 bucks or 45 bucks. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like 35 $40. Yeah. Uh, and then we're able to take the HDMI connection directly into the LiveView Solo. Um, we have also seen other workflows using the high-end live view units, mm -hmm. like the LU uh, 600. Yep. Uh, it has a new mode called wireless bridge mode, and with that, you can pair multiple devices to that network from the live view, completely wireless, 
and uh, also use the cellular bonded connection so yeah. that you've got the throughput to be able to broadcast. Exactly. Um, I mean, field. being able to bring their audience the scoop right from the show floor is probably pretty critical, but also pretty awesome for yeah. them, you know, and you can't risk having that stream when especially if it's an exclusive <laughs> scoop and everyone's tuning in and have that start to buffer or die out for sure so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad things are, are going well over there um and we'd love to be able to follow up and maybe share a little behind the scenes story on how they're doing it because i think the audience at home constantly loves hearing all of these different types of setups some of the questions and i think joyce is going to even bring them up later at the end are well, what do you think the best mobile live stream setup is? Well, there's probably 20. <laughs> and even when I go live, not in this situation, but I'm by no means an expert, I probably have three different ways of going live in my backpack. Yeah. You know, whether it's quickly something with my phone, uh, adding a solo unit, whether it's having a nice, uh, great camera, but that's portable. You know, always as backup, because I never know. Sometimes it's faster to use one way or another. I may not always have a chance to set up a tripod and get that perfect shot. So it's nice to have that flexibility. And I love the fact that if I wanted to, I could instantly add another camera source, in essence, yes. uh, as, as any other member of my team basically now becomes an extension of my crew. Right, you know? and uh, something I did want to tease, we recently had an update for Switcher Studio. Uh, we also have a free product called Switcher Go that we'll see a similar update in the coming weeks. If you're using your phone for the main switcher, uh, you can now hold that in portrait or landscape view and still have a widescreen 16 by 9 uh, video that you can shoot out and with one hand switch between sources, so photos, videos, That's graphics. Awesome. Uh, so just with your phone layering in those other assets, you can have some really great looking video. That's almost too much. I don't know if I can handle doing all <laughs> that at the same time. But um, One other thing I wanted to reference while we're here, a few months ago uh, there was a customer in Australia that used mm. our two products together right, for a, yes. uh, a cellular car uh, kind of... I don't know what it was. Yes. Show, I, they were building new technology. There it is. Um, <laughs> satellite brought punch, powertrain, solar team success. It was like a race, stage. but it wasn't some type of competition, but it was just wild stuff. So they built cars that were solar powered, and they're in, in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. And uh, we're able to use the live view for the throughput. They were using Switcher Studio to do uh, some interviews with the team that engineered this product. And a really great website um, or write-up on that on their website. We can share that in the yes, comments. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we'll share it in the, in the comments on the Facebook stream here today. One of the, the cool things about that you just said, in the middle of nowhere, people uh, have for a while now said, well, is the cellular really going to be strong enough? You know, even some of the customers today were talking about, well, we were a little nervous about just going live with just two connections. It is amazing how well it's been working in one of the most congested and dynamic environments ever, which is CES. I forget how many people they said it was up to, but it's, it's out of control. It's the largest trade show but, in the U.S. Yeah, exactly. But the, the being in the middle of nowhere in Australia, same as we had a conversation last night with some folks that, you know, yes, there is cell signal, maybe not all the way up top, but even climbing Mount Everest. We had a couple teams using uh, using a live view there. So great little tip is check opensignal.com. It's a great website. It'll tell you wherever in the world what cell carrier, what the signal service is. Maybe gives you a little more peace of mind. Yeah, so. Uh, so quick tip and trick. Uh, with Switcher Studio in particular, a lot of our customers rely on their 4G LTE connection by default. And uh, in a lot of cases, it works well, but if you're in a big crowd, you're going to have networking problems. Mm -hmm. If the weather is doing something weird, right. that can affect your cellular connectivity. Uh, or if you're in a really remote location, you might not have a great service. So I think um, with our solution in particular, that's where LiveView really shines and being able to use right. those two together. Uh, you, you can't always control uh, what's happening nope. over the airwaves. And uh, infrastructure is going to continue to get better, but I think you'll have a great product, and we're so happy to be able to work together. Thank you so much, Nick. This was awesome, and I look forward to hearing more about what your customers are doing with us, with you. It's super exciting stuff, real cutting-edge stuff. And again, I also encourage you to follow Nick on social. He shares all these great shots of what his customers are up to, and it always blows my mind uh, when you look at the finished product <laughs> versus how they're producing it. So thank you so much. Yeah, just jump over to switcherstudio.com. You can learn more about the product. There's a free 14-day trial. And keep asking questions because Nick is sticking around, so we'll make sure he answers them too. Uh, and I don't know if, Joyce, maybe if we want to throw over to you, do we have anything in the hopper right now that we want to answer? Absolutely. Well, first I want to give Jomo from Zimb Zimbabwe a shout out. We're going global, so thanks for tuning in. 
Um, what else have we got? Claudia, your husband said we look good, so thank you. Thanks, babe. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Troy wants to know what program we're using. He wants to set up, uh, do a small setup. So I think, you know, this would be a great opportunity to, to let him know how he can do it affordably and easily. Um, and Cloudy, before we get to that, you asked how many people were, uh, were estimated to be at CES, and I think it's around 175,000. Wow. So for our stuff to work seamlessly, I mean, that says a lot considering how much cell congestion Everybody is in this area. Everybody's using their cell phones. Too. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay, so <laughs> okay. Well, well, thank you, Joyce, and please keep those questions coming. We're going to have the experts sitting on the couch and hanging out in the green room area, and we'll be doing some live Q&A, and as Joyce mentioned, there's some fun prizes for your questions. Um, but right now, what I'd like to invite over are two cool guests. They do production, lots of different types of stuff for different walks of life, so I'd love to have, oh, excuse me. Yeah, let's bring them over. Come on, guys. I'm sorry. I jumped our schedule. But that's what live is for, right? We just go with it. Uh, so thank you for putting up with me. I am not a professional host, nor do I pretend to be. Um, but neither are these guys. I'm going to give one mic to you. But what you guys are professionals at are going live and taking your clients live from pretty much anywhere. So I'd like to introduce Brian Scheel. And we've got... Uh, Todd, I just spaced on your last. Mason, I knew that. Oh, my goodness. From Broadcast Management Group. Um, so there they are. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> uh, so, man, Brian. Claudia, <laughs> you can talk, man. Is this that girl that, wait, was that a compliment or not? That, that is a compliment. All right, I've got to be careful. Man, how long have we been here? This girl hasn't taken a breath, people. Woo, can we get a drink? Claudia? Well, that's why I'm glad you guys are here because you can start talking because you wow. guys actually have a lot more knowledge and experience that I could ever My hope head to is have. going like <laughs> this. It's like that's a lot of information you yeah. just let out there. Well, I, I, we do want to hear what you guys have to say because I think when I look at the different types of clients and the different types of jobs that you do, it really does blow my mind. And I think it's, it's not always the big, 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 most expensive projects that are, let's say, the most exciting. Sometimes it is the smaller, lower budget projects that can be just as interesting or you get to experiment. I know you've done a lot of cool stuff with big companies, but done sort of more avant-garde things like with VR, um, different things at like Comic-Con, you name it. Lots of cool entertainment venues going live from all over the place. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that, well, what I, that craziness looks oh, like. I, I'd love to. And thank you, Live View. Thank you for having us here. And it's great to meet Ben and Chris and Ari over there and, and Claudia and Joyce, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we did Comic-Con. I just told Ari that we did Comic-Con at uh, 360 mm -hmm. live using the data bridge mode, which was great. Uh, and there's been some updates even since then, so it's great. We do a lot of stuff with uh, NBC, uh, America's Got Talent, and The Voice. Mm -hmm. We won't do a show without the live unit. Uh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's good to hear that it's it's a, a true support and well, backbone. And it's been the primary source of internet on three live episodes: one for The Voice and two for America's Got Talent. This year, our our not only our primary, our our only. That's crazy. <laughs> our only that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to come back though when you talk about 360. Do you see more and more customers asking for that or looking for it? Uh, is it just an interesting? I don't want to say gimmick, but an augment to a broadcast or... I think you have to have the right scope of work. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something this weekend uh, for, for Kohl's in, in Los Angeles, California. And it's, it's a yoga class. And it's a full-blown stream with a truck and six cameras and a giant jib and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, let's do... I've been wanting to do an exercise class for obvious reasons, but... <laughs> <laughs> I did a, I did a sit up New yesterday. Year's resolutions. Yeah, We're my, in Vegas. <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, okay. right? Forget it. Forget it. And, you know, I think that's the perfect uh, usage for a 360, an exercise class. You can see how other people are mm -hmm. working out um, or even like a Taekwondo class, like that kind right. of stuff. And so Coles said, hey, why don't we finally do that 360 thing you've been talking about? And uh, we're going to go live with it. And, um, you know, so it's all in the usage. Right. We did Comic-Con live for uh, – for uh, Comedy Central, mm -hmm. uh, I'm spacing on the name in the show. What is it? Broad Street, Broad, 
Broad City, Broad City. Thank you. <laughs> Broad City, we did their activation at Comic-Con, so that, that was great. Lots of colors and uh, drawings and things. So Very cool. Yeah. Now, you mentioned brands, though, doing live. And, you know, and I actually want to uh, bring Todd into this, too, because I think, Todd, you also work with a lot of more, let's say, alternative customers that, or brands or corporate that are also getting into live, and that that's a growing market as well. Yeah, it really, it really is. I mean, we've been working with LiveView for a, a number of years now and thrilled with the progression of LiveView. And w my favorite tool in the LiveView toolbox is the LU200. Mm -hmm. uh, often when we use it, it's you know, a hardline internet connection. Um, we've used it uh, the, for Mashable. We did three days of shows at uh, South by Southwest, and that's how we were able to stream to Twitter as we use uh, LU200. We also had a couple of LU500s at the time for uh, field, you know, uh, had crews around mm -hmm. um, uh, South by Southwest. Um, we do, uh, in addition to all the live shows that we do, um, we also do a lot of consulting, and particularly in the OTT space. And uh, corporate is just getting into OTT, and it's a great application. One uh, national financial network that we just built an OTT channel and built the, uh, the network headquarters in Chicago, studios, control rooms, all of that. But we needed a number of remote locations to, in the daily show. So we're producing right now uh, seven hours a day of live shows Monday through Friday and so we bring in these remotes we have live view units uh, LU 200s at each of the locations and then we have the, of course the receiver in Chicago and it works fantastic so they're basically pulling in the live remote feed into yep. the receiver in Chicago doing yep. all the production right there into the whole show so in yeah. essence it is like an at-home production type of an environment you're just throwing a unit out into the field with the camera to capture whether it's a guest or uh, some in the field action and they're able to cut to it in real time yeah, that's, absolutely. That, awesome. And um, one thing that we have coming up that we're going to be using um, uh, Live View also for is the Oscars. We're working with IMDb, and we're going to have uh, our correspondent on the red carpet, and we'll bring that back through an LU200 uh, to the pr truck and integrate it into the whole broadcast. And I think that's interesting to say, too. The LU200 is actually a similar form factor yeah. to the Live View solo unit. Uh, what it has, though, is our two additional internal modems. So you can have up to four, uh, connect, four cellular connections and Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Um, but when you talk about something like the Oscars, where there is a ton of stuff happening, yeah. and if you ever got a chance to pan behind the scenes at that red carpet, it is worse than the mess of wires than we have here. It is cables and trucks and routers and wires and everything uh, for everyone trying to broadcast. So being able to maneuver around right. with a very small pack in your camera even helps get some of the better shots or some of the better angles in a, in a place where everyone's fighting for almost the same content. That's right. uh, so, so you had mentioned that you had, because you had Internet access, you're, yeah. not, you're not plugging the 200 in. Yeah. You're, you're using the 200 with 200. the cell. Uh, no, I'm using uh, I'm using the Ethernet. Oh, using, using the Ethernet. Ethernet. Yeah. So, so basically, as an, as an encoder. That's right, an encoder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. But you have the server. Exactly. At yeah. The truck. yeah. So the service at the truck, yeah, yeah, and we could great. have you know multiple locations. We have another project that we're working on in similar situation. We'll have multiple locations all coming back to the truck. Um, one other thing we did interesting at, at Sundance was with uh, Amazon, and we um, uh, we had a five camera shoot. Uh, we couldn't get a truck in there, so we um, we subswitched the cameras uh, at Sundance, and then we uh, sent it back to a control room in New York, where we did all right. the playback yeah. and the graphics. And that worked great. I think we do. We have a question about this from someone. Did, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, we do have a question. Um, the question is from Daniel Wright, who asks, "Does the Live View Solo need to use cellular data? Can you connect it uh, any other way to the internet?" So uh -huh. all of all of our devices uh, do not need just cellular. They all can take Ethernet and Wi-Fi in addition to it. Some of our other packs, because of that Ethernet, you actually can even bond in a right. satellite. And there are some unique situations where that comes in handy. All of that does is, you know, you want to have more than one connection because basically that creates a more robust and stronger signal. It creates a fat connection. So the more you add, the more robust that signal is. Now there does come a point where you're not, you won't really need all that bandwidth in order to get a great quality signal out. You don't necessarily need, you know, 120 megabits per second, you know, nor would you want to spend that amount in data. Um, and, but the beauty part about whether it's LiveU Solo or any of the other products our guests are talking about 
is that uh, our encoder talks, uh, it talks, uh, excuse me, our algorithm talks directly to the encoder. So we're sensing that bandwidth. So the point is not just when you're static, when you're moving around, that will fluctuate. So as you're moving around, we can ramp up and ramp down the bit rate dynamically on the fly so that you will never lose that stream. It'll be a very slow reduction in quality as it ramps down. The second it recognizes the bandwidth has increased again, it will ramp it back up. So to the end audience, all they're seeing is a great continuous stream as you're walking around. When we did the same solution for the Pride Parade in yeah. New York City two years ago for, for Netflix, yeah. we did this. We had the uh, LU2000 server right. in a... Airbnb yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> along Fifth Avenue, and yeah. here I am on a float. I'm on the yeah. Netflix float with my TriCaster. Thank you, New Tech. Um, and I'm going down with the Orange is the New Black cast, and we're switching cameras with the TriCaster. I had the LU500 at the yeah. time with the extender on yeah. the roof, and then I had a DiGero box, I had a TVU, and I had something called the... Uh, doesn't matter. It, did, it didn't they're work. Not even, they're it not even didn't business. work. The name of the story is the only one that did not let me down yeah. was was the live view. Yeah. The live view was solid. I had all the broadcasts there, and I could switch to it, and I had to watch. You know what's giving me trouble. What's going? And all the others were just crap because you're you're going down Fifth Avenue in the Pride Parade, surrounded by people that are constantly tweeting, and they're right. all you know phones everywhere, and we killed it. I mean, the live view did yeah. not drop once, and everything else was it didn't work at all. Yeah, so now you don't bother bringing those other... Oh, never. No, okay. no, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it's not around. Uh, yeah. so. it's, well, it's not around, right, right, right. Some yeah. of them are, are not around. Uh, yeah, but yeah. that is uh, the uh, the great thing about live views. It allows you to get into places where you can't get a truck. Right. You know, even if you wanted a truck, you can't get a truck. So it makes a lot of things possible that wouldn't have been a few years ago. Yeah, we, we're seeing that now with uh, a lot of theater productions where the infrastructure is this big, beautiful theater, yep. but it's old. Right. There is no infrastructure, and you can't even get a truck up to it in some of the metropolitan areas so being able to when you have to go down into the bowels which is what people want to see they want to see the production but they want to see people getting ready they want to see yeah. the green room they want to see the actors coming in before during and after that's engaging content right. for an audience uh, there's no way to do that unless you had some type of wireless yeah. ability capabilities yeah so this yeah. is super exciting stuff guys uh, I know that there's questions and I think you guys are really well suited to ask them so I'm gonna go to Joyce really quickly and so hey. what questions we've got? We've got lots of questions, a lot of them related to cameras. So we'll start with which, you know, DSLR or professional ca video camera, um, you know, what's the best for live streaming? So we can ask this of our guys here, but I'm sure you have a plethora of different types of cameras that you do depending on the shoot. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of good camera options out there. Um, I think, you know, with shooting and, you know, if you shoot, you know, 1080p uh, 60 you know that's great you know that's what our preference is for everything we uh, do but the cameras there are a lot of good options so. I'm, I'm all over the map I let the yeah. client pick the camera and the lens and um, yeah. you know I, I own C300s I, I own even my Sony EX3s are still killing it and uh, <laughs> you know I, I love the camera and I got C300s I got F, FS 700s that are still in use you put good glass on it and it looks great yeah. Joyce, I don't know if there's anybody back there that actually does some live streaming that wants to comment. I don't know if Nick is hanging out over there or anybody that has a comment about a camera that they're liking right now. No? Let's bring Ari in. Ari. <laughs> Ari has no opinion. HEVC, <laughs> Ari. Let's talk HEVC. Come on. And uh, so every, a couple other people want to know, best 360 camera for streaming. Oh, that, that's that's a tough one, Joyce. So you know, I mean, we we've we at Live View have played around with a lot of 360 cameras and whatnot. <laughs> the one thing that I can say about uh, 360 so far is you really have to make sure that you're using a 4K camera, um, because what happens is when you take that 360 image and then actually make a viewing portal, you're taking only a very small component of that 360 image. So if you don't have a 4K raster you don't have enough data there. And so what you end up with, with, with you know, for example, a 1080 signal is this you know, 320 by 240 little tiny box, and so the resolution is very, very low. And so we very much suggest that if you're looking into 4K cameras, uh, excuse me, into 360 cameras, yeah. you know, definitely take a look at, um, at the 4K options, because uh, those are going to be stronger. And with our uh, LU600 HEVC platform, uh, which can handle uh, 4K with the 4K HEVC card, 
Uh, now we can actually stream that 4K video at you know a, a very decent bit rate, and it's going to look excellent as you uh, send that off to the cloud provider. So Ben and I took a stroll down to the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center's um, Central Hall, and the, the big buzz down there was 5G wireless. So how's LiveView taking advantage of that? Oh, that's that's another really good question, Joy. So. Um, the fifth generation wireless uh, networks are, are really just starting to uh, you know, pop up in metro markets for testing and whatnot. So what we're starting to see with fifth generation is, is massive amounts of bandwidth. Um, but the thing that fifth generation doesn't buy you is that added resiliency. So w we imagine that we're going to see a, a trend toward 5G over the next you know, four or five years. Um, and you know our, our modular modems will just replace the, the current 4G modems that are in there, and we'll start using uh, 5G modems instead. Um, and and at that point, you'll have a lot of bandwidth, and you spread that across you know the four major carriers in the United States, and now you have resiliency as well. So it, it just probably means that you're going to need less modems, uh, you're going to need less bandwidth with the HEVC optimizations. Uh, but you know 5G, I think, is going to be uh, really exciting, and and we're already working with the technology and standards as we. Uh, as we head into uh, 2018. So, so, so Joyce, do, are there any questions for our guests right now uh, on the line? No. No. All right, we're listening. gonna come back to them <laughs> and let them keep going because I was kind of digging what we were starting to get into there a little bit with some of the can, can projects. I ask you, a yes, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> when you get the HEVC upgrade in the 600, do you have to engage that encoding, or it's it's HEVC now forever? So uh, the HEVC encoder that we've uh, picked up basically can do both 264 and 265. Uh, and so that really primarily for us is important with uh, the store and forward functionality, right? Because a lot of editors today can't quite accept HEVC as a, as a codec for edit. So what we're seeing is, you know, H.264 would be your capture format uh, when doing store and forward, but you'd still stream HEVC for live and, and get the bandwidth savings and the reliability uh, savings as well. Thank you. Very cool. Well, I, I really am glad that you guys joined us here tonight. And I do want you to stick around, too, because I think when we get into the Q&A, we can answer. As you know, Chris can answer pretty much any question that's coming through. But it's better to hear even what's happening from the field and kind of that experience as well. So I want to say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll stick around because we want to do some Q&A at the end. Um, but now, maybe Joyce, I will go back to you to see if there are any other uh, cool questions or anything happening on, on Facebook right now. Sounds good. Well, a lot of people are waiting for the, the popular Patty Mayo, uh, who's in the crowd, our YouTube star. So we're going to let him walk on down to the, down to the sofa. Exactly. Guys, so a lot of buzz about him. Um, he actually reached out to us a couple of months ago, and we started uh, we started engaging online, and we started connecting, and he's doing some amazing things. So can't wait to hear what he's got to say. All right, here he is, <laughs> live in studio. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Patty. Thank you for joining us. That was a nice choice. We should do an, we should have you do the intro for everybody. I like that. Yeah, that, that. was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but actually, what's, what's cool is I think it'd be nice to tell people at home really who you are because they may not know who Patty Mayo is, and it's some pretty cool content that you've been doing for a while. Thanks. Called, yeah. You know. Well, basically, as some people know and some people don't know, I'm a YouTuber, so I put everything I do in my life on YouTube, mainly my main job. I'm a bounty hunter mm -hmm. uh, and a stringer, so which fits into live view really well. Uh, but I put all my bounty hunt captures and I put all my stringer episodes um, up on YouTube. For yeah, so it's been primarily produced episodes that you've been done in like a serial format for a while. Correct. For my, yeah, we were at 130 episodes recorded of uh, VOD for the Bounty Hunter show. And before mm -hmm. that, we had another 240 recorded episodes. That's all. So how long have you been on YouTube? About three years now. Okay. And started to get more and more into live or wanted to look at it? Or... Were your audience asking for live action? We tested live at our house, um, in kind of like my house studio, mm -hmm. for a little while. And people really seem to like it. They like interacting with us, like coming on and asking questions, being able to see us in a live setting. Um, you know, it really enhances the engagement that you have with your fans, and it gives them a new way to connect to you. So that was really cool. The only thing I didn't like about it was that we were in this studio setting where we're kind of 
sat in our seat. Like we this. Can, or, yeah, this, right, <laughs> right, like this. Um, but there's only so much that we can do with the type of content that we produce. You right. know, we're, we're run and gun. We're more exactly. actionable. So we wanted to really get out in the field. So yeah. when LiveView came around and I saw the solo device, I saw that as a really great opportunity to take what we're doing on the field, bring that live yeah. more so uh, better than just a cell phone. Because when we did live in the field, we did it on a cell phone. It wasn't very great. Mm -hmm. We wanted to use our DSLRs. We wanted to use our broadcast cameras. We wanted to use the SDI cameras and the HDMI cameras. Um, and that's what LiveView allowed us to do, is to bring that higher production value that we, we like for our show, our recorded show, mm -hmm. onto live as well. So how are you balancing out on-demand and live? Or how do you go about thinking about it in terms of planning? Well, right now we're really trying to just feel it out. Yes, so we're still experimenting with live, seeing people like, seeing what they don't like seeing what hours uh, people like us to be on live and how long they want us to be on live, playing everything from um, going out at night and keeping live on for five hours as we're going through the night and going through captures. That's or... almost like IRL now. You're doing <laughs> IRL bounty hunting? Yeah, Is pretty much. Okay. A lot of IRL stringing. I mean, we're yeah. on the Anaheim fires in California yeah. a few months ago, and we were out there for eight hours and streamed the whole thing. It's crazy. Versus um, sending the camera live when we are in the moment of action. So. Right. Instead of, you know, we're staking out someone's house, sending it live when we are right there ready to capture them, or instead, or, you know, instead of sitting in the car, sending it live right when the house is on fire or right. we show up at a car accident and so on and so forth. So it's like the breaking news versus the we're going to give you just ongoing coverage. Right. So how do you prepare for a shoot like that? I mean, eight hours, everything's going to die battery-wise, right? You would think. <laughs> okay. You would think. And, and actually, it was a really interesting process to get there. Um, we actually, in my truck, we use two 200 amp hour deep cycle batteries. It's, it, could wow. run, it, could, it could run your house yeah. for, for a decent amount of time. Yeah. Um, so we have enough battery power built into the truck uh, so we can run our big cameras and we can run monitors inside the truck and, and use a live view device with that. Mm -hmm. But then when we are run and gun, um, when my camera person, my girlfriend, Kayla, is, she's always on the camera. And so we have... Uh, Kayla's here. This is Kayla? Here. She's, she's, yeah, the she's the camera? Yeah, she's wow, the camera Wow, okay. <laughs> so we have um, the LiveView device strapped to her bulletproof vest. Um, wait, so wait, wait, wait. Is the LiveView on the outside? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. It's an extra layer of protection. Is that insured? No, I think, I, I think Joyce said she'd give me Joyce, a new one. Joyce, we better insure shot. that. All right. <laughs> so we, we strapped that to the front okay. of her vest and wired to her camera and so it's incredible that we can go from this really intricate truck setup where we have PTZ cameras on the top of the truck and yeah. IR sensors and strobe lights and, and, and scene lights and all sorts of stuff and these deep batteries. We have chairs in the back. We have, it's crazy. And then using the same live view device, we can then run down the street Chase after, someone down after the a street. bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. So are you switching out of the truck? Are you producing out of the truck? A lot of the times. Yeah. We're on the okay. road and that's one of the things we do with the live view device is we had an in-car cam that we'd plug into the HDMI port, mm -hmm. and then when we need to run out and jump out, we just switch the cameras out, yep. and the LiveView device just keeps up right with it. That's awesome. And just switches the cameras, and sometimes you have to press the button again to go live when it recognizes a new camera, but it's, it's a seamless transition so cool. going from one camera setup, one yeah. whole different setup to another. So you definitely sound a little techy as well and like into it which is yeah, cool yeah I'm definitely a geek, but so. you obviously also have a vision to and understand the platform and what bringing different types of content to your audience can do and potentially even what that can do for you as a business owner too right right well because in now terms or nowadays we have the youtube adpocalypse which everyone's worried about mm -hmm. we had the adpocalypse last year we have the adpocalypse this year with cpms going through the floor not people not making a lot of money on their videos like we used to and we used to upload three years ago on YouTube. You could you can upload one video a week. You make great CPMs. Mm -hmm. Now you have to fight a lot harder for it. There's more competition, but there's also more scrutiny online. So you have to find out different ways to monetize that content. And through live has been a great way to monetize that because you see the fans engaging directly, and they donate to the show, and they want to see live. And that's mm -hmm. a, an amazing p outpouring from the fans. Yeah. Uh, we've seen some great donations come through and people that really – gives them a new way to support the show. That's cool. You know, so they go on there, they can buy T-shirts to support the show and, 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 and keep us going. But now they can donate live, and they can get their questions answered or get recognition for it. Um, and then it also allows us to syndicate to multiple platforms. So now while I'm going live to YouTube, I can syndicate to these other platforms I don't use it very often, you know, Facebook and Twitter and right. those types of things. So I'm sorry, is there a question? Yep, we've, got, uh, we've got a question uh, from Adam Harkins. Do you have any future plans for the truck? <laughs> the truck has lots of future plans. <laughs> uh, like I said, we're just feeling it out. So I think the truck is mainly going to be used for reconnaissance, surveillance, 
Um, and stringing on fire this, in SWAT, SWAT situation. That's where it's really going to be utilized uh, in the future with live. You're definitely going to always stream from the truck. It's not, it's not a VOD type of truck. It's definitely a live view truck. Well, yeah. You know, it sounds like that's what it's, the sweet spot is, so why oh, not yeah. go live? Of course. So does the, any of that help, though, the live combined with VOD, uh, whether it's on YouTube or other platforms? Is there uh, sort of any more, like, from a business perspective, reason to be going live, not just because the For fans sure, love absolutely. it? absolutely. You know? Yeah, the fans love it, but at the same time, now we're double dipping. Mm -hmm. So now as I'm out and I'm recording a show, I'm recording that bounty hunt, I'm recording that fire, that accident, whatever the action is. We're recording it um, normally, you know, onto the SD cards as we normally do, but now we're also streaming it. So now... Yeah. Not only do I get the, the, the content out there immediately to the fans, but now two days later, I can put my recorded content out. So now I double dip that way. Um, it helps with the monetization, of course. Um, and then it helps organic traffic by bringing in traffic from other platforms like Facebook and Twitter and Twitch, uh, which is a huge upcoming yes. streaming platform. Yeah. So it really allows us to seamlessly syndicate to those platforms. Without having, and, and the big thing out in the field is we don't have a lot of time to do anything. I was just going to ask that. You, yeah, no are, you don't even have time to strategize. Yeah, you I mean, know? you see, it's, it's like we're driving yeah. down the street one second, and then there's our guy, yep. and let's go, you know, let's go get him. It's guns out. It's, you know, you're, it's, it's yeah. pedal to the metal. And it's great because live view, you know, she just sat, or Kayla in her seat, she just, boop, just, that's it. That's just, awesome. That's, then it's done. Yeah. And, you know, and you can make it, the great thing about live view is that you can be more complex. So you can send it through Switchboard, right. and you can, you know, do all sorts of other fancy stuff with it. We can send it through, you can put graphic overlays on it, mm -hmm. which sometimes they'll send it to a server, put graphics on it. And other times, you can just run it just super simple. Just go live. Yeah. 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 Now, that's awesome. So are you also uh, interacting with with uh, your fans while some of these we are, yeah. chases are going on. Yeah, you, you have to because that's the great thing about yeah. live is they want to know what's going on. And, and yeah. you have to let the fans a lot of time be the director. So through the yeah. comments, you're saying, oh, go back and, you know, we want to see more of that. Or ask your fugitive this question. Or, you know, they see something sometimes that we don't see. And I'll get a text message just like, hey, you missed this. And so, yeah, I think it's really important on live to interact with the fans because that's, that's the core that's of such, it. That's such a fantastic uh, comment you just made because we've heard about that now from a couple of uh, unique streamers. Uh, uh, Mary Armstrong of the Never Settle Show produces a Facebook Live talk show. And the, the great thing about it that makes it different, oh, it's a talk show, but it's just on Facebook? No, during the course of the show, the at-home audience is actually dictating the production of that live show, right? Yeah, you know, and that to me is it's just, hard to ignore. That would because never would have been watching. possible several years ago. Yeah, no, it's not. I'm sorry, we got a question. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about uh, fan interaction, you want to do like a quick lightning round? You're getting a bunch of questions from your let's fans. Let's do it. Let's sure. Do yeah, it. yeah, let's do it. So let's do it. So first question: How do you monetize? How do we monetize? Obviously through Facebook ads, uh, then through merchandise. Now we everybody, a lot of fans support our show by buying merch. Like this fine sweatshirt I'm wearing right here with the American flag in the front and the, and the my tattoo on the back. You can get it at uh, teespring.com forward slash Patty Mayo. No, actually, Patty Mayo TV will be the new, uh, the new merch star soon. Um, and then obviously sponsors, um, great sponsors like EDU Birdie. Uh, we did a sponsorship with Live View. Um, so great companies like you guys help, you know, help keep the show going. Okay, next question. What's the most dangerous situation that you've been involved in that you chose not to show? Ooh. Ah, that we chose not to show. It sounds like a person who, who's texted, oh, yeah, let's, let's who's sending this, this in? Is from Ra, hands. Ra, Ra Hannah hands. on Facebook. Um, one particular situation in, um, came up about six months ago where we were trying to apprehend a uh, former uh, Marine, or no, he was, he was in the Navy, former Navy member. And um, he was living out of his car, and we went to go pull him out. And he came out of the car, and he uh, was a very, censored? He, very big guy. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, we, oh. Well, <laughs> I went to go apprehend him, and he took me up and slammed me down on the hood of my car and took off. And so that was kind of the end of that. And I said, let's just not, let's just put that one in the bank. That doesn't yeah. need to go anywhere. Well, speaking of apprehension, how would you behave if you had to arrest a fan? Love you, Patty. This is from Barbara, <laughs> Barbara on Facebook. I get that question a lot, and it really depends if they're wearing merch. Like, if, oh. if, you're, wearing, if you're wearing merchandise, you can remain on bond. But if not, then... Then unfortunately, you have to revoke you. Oh, and let's go with one last question here, and I think this is going to be the most important, well thought out uh, question of the night from Brian Christopher Adams on Facebook. Hey, Patty, how old are you? How tall are you? And how much do you weigh? <laughs> do not ask me any of those questions. <laughs> uh, I'm somewhere between 18 and 40. I weigh 140 pounds, 145 soaking wet. And what was the third question? How tall, tall. am I? 
Uh, your social security number and credit card information. Uh, <laughs> I, I am five foot seven and a half. That was a burning question. Uh, Thanks. Uh, this is a, isn't a question, it's a comment. Patty for, pres Patty for president, will you run with Oprah? Will you run, will I run against Oprah? No, will with you run like with Oprah. Oprah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They know what? That would be interesting. Wouldn't that? <laughs> yeah. Be the VP to Oprah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I would. I would not, no. Yeah. Because I, I, don't, I don't qualify. I'm not, I'm not 35 yet. But come in five more years okay. when I qualify, I'll be running. Very somewhere. interesting. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> oh, well, then they, who's that? All right, well, then you get, there you go. There we go. I will, I'll call Oprah You heard it here first, everybody. I'll, Who knew this, this kind of scoop was going to I'll call her happen. on my way home and see what she's doing. <laughs> okay. well, Michael thinks we're rock stars for having Patty on, so thanks, Michael. Thanks, Woo! Michael. Go live you. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is probably the coolest I could ever be accused of being right now, just sitting right, right here. So, um, Where's your merch? Uh, oh, uh, we're giving that away for these questions. So That's when we true. come back yeah, to George, she can show right? the cool sweatshirt. We got a couple hats. Um, the shirt, the pillows in the shirt are exclusive one of a kind that I handmade. So no, we have to really DM me for that one. Okay. Um, but this was like amazing. I love hearing about this. Are there any, let's say tips and tricks from a behind the scenes? Because when you're first starting out and you have to make that first investment, you know, okay, I'm moving on from just the phone. Right. I know I want to do something a little bit better and better quality. What is your like? What do you think is the first thing to look at getting? Is it a camera? Uh, is it the whole workflow? Do you invest in one or the other? Like, what would you suggest to someone who's really trying to enhance their brand? I always tell people to well, in terms of production gear, start with audio. Video is secondary, and that's where Live View comes in. But if you have clean audio, then you have clean video. And the next part of clean video is hooking up a nice DSLR. You can pick up an A7S for relatively cheap nowadays. Throw a nice lens on it, mm -hmm. and when you hook at that the A7S up with the Live View device, the great thing is you don't need to add a whole lot of extra lighting on your camera because it's great in low light. Um, and the Live View device transmits in such a high rate, a high bit rate, that it really adds that professional feel to your show. All of a sudden, you add the Live View device, and it's it's not a huge investment in in terms of what you get out of it, right. but it really makes your show. It, it increases the perception of value on your show. So when people are watching you, they want to come back and watch shows that are produced well, right. that look nice, because it's, it's, it's nice to watch something that looks nice. Well, you don't like watching... And that's watching, credibility, too, yeah. to what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you're 12 years old and you can just watch HBO through the fuzz, that's... <laughs> you, but on YouTube, you have a lot of options, so you right. need to be able to compete. If you want to compete yeah. in, in today's market, you need to have the equipment, like a live view device, that allows you to stream and keep up with the, with the competitors, because everyone is, is upping their game every... I mean, every right. month and every day, you're seeing that, that, that the competitive level really increase. Right. And so from a production standpoint, it's important. But from a sponsor standpoint, a monetization point standpoint, right. it's also very important because people don't want to spend money on, right. you know, bad looking video. That's awesome, excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. We're going to cut back over to Joyce because I think we're going to get ready for a little we bit of a Q and A time. Yeah, yeah. I think we're so queued up. But thanks so much, Patty. Thank I really you. appreciate yeah, you coming by. No problem. So hang out for a little bit because then All we right. can have a drink after this. All right. I need one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So a really good question we got oh, is Joyce. how to stream to more than one platform at a time from a mobile setup, which is actually a great segue into our next guest. He is the fabulous Rudy Ellis of Switchboard Live. He's actually hanging out at the uh, Cosmo as well as us for the Sprocket Startup Suite. And uh, let's get him on. Hey, Rudy. Oh, you got to with the thing with you. I was getting ready to take a break. I thought he was going to sit with you, Joyce. Um, Get over here, Rudy. <laughs> Never mind. That's all right. I love Rudy. It's okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. I feel so crazy right now because this is not my forte, everybody. <laughs> I'm usually the one that has to like prep and get all my tech down and be interviewed. So okay. this is very, very odd for me. Um, but it makes it easy when we have people like you here talking about. I would love, though, before we even dive into anything else, for you to tell us a little bit about Sprocket and what's happening here at CES. Because sure. I've been trapped in here all day today. Okay. So I would love to hear what's been happening actually here in the Cosmo, right? Yeah, we're on the 21st floor. Mm -hmm. um, so Sprocket is a, is, a, is a group, an organization that has a, um, a connection with NAB. Mm -hmm. So um, invite startups that are in the broadcast media industry that are disrupting, you know, right. doing cool things, cool tech. And uh, we were actually a part of Sprocket 2016, I believe. Um, and so they reached out to us and said, hey, we'd love for you guys to come 
because CES is a huge show. You get lost in the noise. Yes, we're gonna have you a do. Suite. We're going to invite some, um, you know, some industry folks. We're going to invite some past companies. Um, we'd love for you guys to be a part of that. And so today was kind of like just a mixer, just meet and greet with some, some people. Um, it's also cool just to meet some of the other companies, right? Because right. it goes on every year. It's, you know, it's great to see what new companies are coming in, the products that they're doing, and then do a little BD work as well, right? Well, and that's what we love because, you know, at, at LiveView, it's not just we're one part portion sure. of this whole live stream. We're, we are that first mile. But by partnering with different media startups, yep. different partners, we make that workflow that much better and that much easier for our customers right. to get better and better streams. Um, so, you know, we're big believers in this bracket thing because, yes, uh, 10 years ago or so, we were startup. that mm -hmm. startup disrupting that kind of broadcast media industry. Uh, and now it's just happening at a faster and faster rate. And with everything going into the cloud, uh, it's just super important for us to be friends with sure. and constantly be integrating with and seeing what that next cloud-based application is that's going to make media live streaming uh, just that much better and that much more ubiquitous for everyone yeah. to be able I mean, to do. Think about it. It's, it's so many cool technologies. There's things that are coming up with, you know, you know, different ways to monetize video, different ways to provide, you know, image recognition in live video. Mm -hmm. So it's, for me, it's, it's, it's a learning element as well. Yeah. So. Was there some cool stuff like that that you bumped into Well, just today? talking to, yeah, a company, um, and that's what they're doing is being able to see, like, inside the video, machine mm -hmm. learning for live video. And it's like, just, I had to take a step back and think about it. Like, wow, yeah. he's blowing my mind, you know? Yeah. So, but I, you can see the practicality for it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, so. Absolutely. Yeah, data driving content yep. is kind of an interesting. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wild, wild world. So tell us a little bit then about Switcher because you were a Sprocket startup, you know, at the NAB a couple years ago. Yep. Uh, the company continues to evolve. There's some killer new packages and services uh, that I think people at home would like to hear about because I think we've mentioned Switchboard a couple times. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the customers did too, and maybe they don't truly understand. The idea is right now we're going just to Facebook right sure. now. Um, if we wanted to, we could be going to your Facebook as well at the same time. Yeah, that would have been, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we should have thought ahead. Yeah. No, <laughs> but we, in, in theory, it, it's, you can multi-publish to a variety of destinations, and distribution is very key, especially for some smaller live streamers that are very, like, micro-influencers or niche-focused right. markets. The broader you can get your reach and have someone else's brand also supporting and distributing that content is important. Uh, and I think that's a key element of Switchboard, but not the only well, element. Well, think about it. It's, it's such a fragmented space right now. You have mm -hmm. all these different platforms, um, and they're becoming really niche-y. Um, and you, as a publisher, big or small, you have to decide which platform do I need to be on, right? right. Where are people you know, tuning in to watch content? Um, and so that's, that was kind of like the driving factor for, for us building this this company and this product is you don't have to make that decision, right? Right. And so why, why are you making? Why that? are you making? Because not decision? everybody watches the same place all the time. Correct. Right? I mean, yeah, you have just like you know you well, sometimes you're on an iPad or mm -hmm. your, your laptop, you're on right. your, your mobile phone, your big screen TV. So it's that same type of idea. Um, they're different platforms, um, or you may have a large audience on one platform. It's a great way to test the market on another platform. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know you have a huge YouTube following. But, you know, Twitch has an IRL section, and you want to try that out, but not alienate your already existing YouTube audience. Right. Great way to do that is by using a product like ours. Um, and we did that with Joycaster. So Joycaster was uh, kind of like our, you know, initial product. It was out there. It's been out there um, for over three years mm -hmm. now. Um, it's, you know, kicking butt. Uh, we have, yeah. you know, full amount of users on the platform. Um, but I'm, you know, super excited about what you've heard us talk about this is Switchboard Cloud. Right. So we took the best from Joycaster, all the feedback that we learned over the last couple of years, and we've incorporated those and more features within Switchboard Cloud, and that's our that's our platform. Um, multiple inputs, being able to have you know video come from different types of encoders, multiple solos, LU two hundred, mm -hmm. Switcher Studio applications. Right. It doesn't matter, right? Being able to manage all of that content um, easily and then distribute it to all the different destinations, um, and platforms, social platforms that make sense, you know, for your for your viewing audience. Right. And then being able to like manage that, but then you get to view instead of having to go to multiple different places to find out how well is everything performing, yep. uh, am I doing the right thing? Having that be within one framework is super helpful because as a marketing person, 
the last thing I need to spend more and more time trying to analyze yeah. and change my, you know, I want that feedback so I can adapt to my content very quickly. Exactly. Um, but I don't want to spend forever trying to get it. And in this type of world, you need to be super, super agile. You know, if you're finding that viewership is dropping off or you're finding certain content is being reacted to, you want to be able to adapt sure. super, super yeah. quickly. And, and that's our goal is to make it really easy, right? Mm -hmm. So there are solutions out there that you can use if you're, you know, you have a video engineering background or a technical SWAT team, but that's not our focus. Our focus is that marketer, is that yeah. social media manager person that, you know, they have an event or they have a product. And their goal is, hey, we want to make sure that people are aware of whatever, you know, live content we're putting out there. Right. Um, that's the goal of a live event or a live press conference or whatever it may be. Hey, we, we're sitting here talking about, oh, you can, it's super easy. You can do it from anywhere, run and gun. Let's be real. There is work involved. It is definitely work you know? involved. And it isn't just the yeah. same of, oh, just turn it on and go live. You know, we did a run through. We tried to block it out. I messed up a few times. Yeah. You know, I said I'm not a professional. But, you know, we've got smart people here. There's equipment here. You still have to approach it like a production, yeah. even though it is for social. So if you're investing all that time, you want to make sure you're getting some value out of it. You want to make sure people yeah. are watching you it. You want to make sure people can watch exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so for us, that's, that's you know, part of what 2018 means a lot for us is making sure that that workflow is easy. Yeah. So video in, select your destination, slide right, you're live. Yeah. Right? Um, really I, simple. I have personally used it. No a way. Of things. So it is easy to use. Awesome. Well, that's so, good to hear. Uh, and, it, and it is. It's, it's fun because you, you really do, at a glance, be able to say, I'm going to choose right now because maybe this is great for a couple platforms, but I'm not going to send it to maybe my, my Twitch platform right sure. now because it's really not the best. But different types of content I may be producing, like when Ben's running all over the convention center, I would love to send that to every single platform because it's very accessible mm -hmm. on whatever device you're doing. Yeah. You know, so it allows you as a marketer to actually plan. And, and, and then, like you mentioned at the top of the, the segment, mm -hmm. is being able to incorporate um, – you know, influencers or brands mm -hmm. or sponsors that are part of that live activation, right? right? Um, we, we did a, an event, um, actually Al Gore did Climate Reality, a 24-hour live stream. Um, and what they did is they were able to go out and invite or opt in, you know, people that wanted to be a part of this 24-hour live stream. And so they wanted publishing to well over 1,500 different destinations by enabling wow. people to <laughs> say, hey, I want to be a part of this. You know, I believe in the message. I believe in the content. How can I be a part of that? And so yeah. they were able to opt in and then carry that content on their Facebook page. That's really cool. Yeah, so yeah. we saw some tremendous numbers from that. But just that concept, you know, you can do that whether it's, you know, a music conference. You have different bands coming up. You have the ability to publish to Band A and Band B at their different segments. That's super because they cool. Because everyone has audiences, and, yeah. and that's the goal is to make sure that's, you it's, uh, it's taking target marketing to live video. You, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's super. I like that. I think I'm going to snag that. Cool. Yeah. Trademark. Uh, <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, I, I think the Bellagio fountain started to go off and everybody ran out to the balcony. I don't know if our camera angle gets it. It'd be cool if it does. Um, but I don't know if we have any questions because I was going to say. We actually have two from Bree. Well, why don't we bring also, I may actually just bring Chris to start to come on over too so we can ask Rudy those questions and we can go into a little uh, a little Q and A segment. So go ahead, Joyce. What's sure. what's okay. up for Rudy? So oh, R there are the fountains. Check it out. R A Hannah. Would That's like live. To know. That's live right now. That's outside yeah, our, our balcony yeah, right here. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So Claudia mentioned a little bit earlier. It was miserable out today, yeah. and around four or five o'clock, the sun came it's out, like, and now it's gorgeous. A nice clear picture of Las Vegas. Yes. So R A Hannah would like to know what's the lowest amount of bandwidth uh, to use switchboard. The lowest amount of bandwidth. Um, so just like, I guess, if you were normally streaming live. Um, to pretty much any destination. Pretty, pretty much yeah. any destination. So that's one of the benefits of using our product is that one stream, once it's in the switchboard, we, we use the power of our platform to distribute that same quality to all the different right. destinations. So, so basically, you know, any content delivery network, whether it's a social media site or other, do, do have minimum bandwidth requirements. They do. Yeah, they do. So, you know, and I think what Rudy's basically saying is you push it in, that limitation is on the distribution, the actual the, end, the and yeah, the destination yeah, the side. Destination yeah. side. Um, but a good example would be. But yeah. you wouldn't go below a certain amount because, it, regardless of switchboard, the because because the quality would be bad, or quite frankly, Facebook wouldn't accept the stream. Yeah. You know, if they, so, they recognize. That's a good rule of thumb. What is Chris? Do you remember the 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 lowest? Like for one and Facebook? a half, maybe I would say one point five two megabits. It might low. even be lower than for, that for Facebook. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're, they're streaming about you know twenty two hundred or so to the home. 
Okay. So, you know, I, I mean, uh, up towards 2200 or, or you, you know, okay. 3000 or if mega, uh, kilobits per second, megabits would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 kil, kil, kilobits per second. Yeah. So, you know, the, between 2.2 and 3 megs is, is really the sweet spot right. at 720p for Facebook. And yeah. we'll take that same stream and exactly. basically duplicate it to all the different publishing. So right. you don't need 2.2 times 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 different decimals. Right, I think that's and a really that's good point. that's where it gets really you, Yeah, you don't need to multiply that bandwidth. Correct. Um, and, and that is one of the, the beauty parts about uh, even with the live view, and especially as you, if you get into bigger and bigger productions and you start to get into HEVC in that first mile, oh, yeah, is now you huge. can do even better quality at lower and lower bandwidths. So some of the stuff we've seen even the broadcasters do at like one megabit per second is ridiculous. Uh, in H.264 it would have been completely broken up. You wouldn't even be able to make out the image. Pixelation, so huh? so yeah. things are really uh, about to really blow yeah. up. And, yeah. and, and HEVC with sports as well is, is really tremendous. It looks amazing. The grass, the grass on fields is just crisp. You know, it, it's, a, it's a totally different experience. Uh, and for at least our news customers, I mean obviously we deal with a very wide swath of customers you know we've got a huge news market uh, that they're very very excited because now they can be on you know out in the sticks and eat you know the middle, in the of, middle of the hurricane right or, exactly you know, yeah. So, so yeah and yeah. that's actually an excellent point is yeah. that a lot of our customers uh, used live view exclusively to cover the hurricanes yeah. uh, this year you know it was a, a very bad year um, yeah. and you know we had uh, you know 60 units up at one time streaming uh, Maria out of Florida so you know it was it was pretty nuts. Um, but you can't do that with a satellite dish. You can't put a satellite dish up in 140 mile an hour winds. It, no. You know, it, it'll rip it off the well, top of the truck. Well, you have so. to take care of your crew, too. Let's be real. You know, news is news, but people, you know, you got to take Lives care of your people. Matter, right? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if there's anyone. Chris, you're going to stay put right there to I'm answer gonna questions. I'm going to stay put, and I'm going to answer so, questions. So we have a spot at the at the couch if anyone wants to come back down to help uh, to answer any of our last questions before we wrap things up a little bit. Nick? Yeah, come on, Nick. Have, have a seat. Mr. Nick. You've done a yeah. lot of live stuff, too. All right, Joyce, what do we got up next so on the... So we've got uh, Alfredo is using Switchboard, and he's still working out hey, the tips on his uh, workflow. So any tips and tricks for uh, Alfredo, who's kind of working everything out? Tips and tricks. Um... Well, I mean, I guess with anything with live, practice, test, practice, test, practice, you know, right? We could have like used that advice tonight. Uh, <laughs> we have time to if, practice and test. If okay. you're going into a, a new venue or space, um, definitely test. try to get there a day ahead of time yeah. and try things out. Try to make sure your packages arrive when you arrive, <laughs> too. But that's 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 another good tip, you know, and as uh, yeah. Claudia mentioned earlier, you know, open signal is an excellent way if you're using mm -hmm. uh, cellular as your primary method of transport in order to, you know, actually test that and see what's there. Also, you know, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, if you can hop on Wi-Fi. The convention centers really have, uh, you know, excellent Wi-Fi at this point. So um, it's, if you can get on that and you know that it's there, it's, it's great. Batteries, extra batteries, tip oh. and trick, always for every device you have if you're going live remotely. <laughs> the worst case is everything works, but you have no power. <laughs> so. That sucks. Yeah. Anything else, Joyce? Yeah. Well, speaking of batteries, batteries is that's, uh -oh. that is a problem. See? Batteries are always a problem. <laughs> However, LiveView does have like this big battery pack, which is amazing. It extends the LiveView device for a couple more hours. Oh yeah, it's like forever. Talking about the Anton Bowers. Yes. Yeah, yeah the yeah, Anton yeah. Bower battery packs are awesome. We've yeah, got now, an AB mount and a gold mount both. Well, the thing I did with the LiveView pack, you know what I did? We took the because it's got a USB in, so I actually had it powering my LiveView device and powering our camera at the same time. So it works out great, but yeah, battery usage in the field is huge. So it's great that the live view device is used so so little. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you're in cold environments, that's something else that we would, you know try and, and tell our customers about. You know, batteries are, are very susceptible to cold, and so you know you, you don't necessarily get the same runtime that you would a, yeah. a, you know if it's minus five, right. you know, a, a, as opposed to you know 95, and you're running through the the heat of California, so. Right, and if you're, if you're shooting a production in negative five, the only suggestion I have is just move somewhere else and don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, you know, I mean, Mount Everest, we've had people, uh, you know, do live streams on sailor from Antarctica. What? I, I, we couldn't the, make this up. The so. Canadian Paralympics were doing a ski competition, the, 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 the ski championship, um, and uh, it was minus 10 at the top of the mountain somewhere in Canada, Jeez. and the... Solo was still working. The camera 
barely was working. <laughs> what happened were the modems themselves froze. So apparently so modems, they don't do well modems are the problem. Yes. You know, our, our units, no problem. 100% fine. Uh, modems, they freeze. Yeah, they, they froze. But I also mentioned, I said, next time tuck them in and put a little blanket around it. You yeah, know, like a little warmers. hat on it. You need like those heating packs. Uh, like, yeah. Skiing, right? Mo exactly. Modem hand warmers. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. perfect. Skiing or exactly. snowboarding. Exactly. Toes and hand warmers. So Joyce? Can you explain the best way to use LiveView products for a multi-cam mobile live car unit? Wow. Now you also wow. want to have some social engagement. So that's a mouthful. Wow. Sounds like the we live view somebody, truck. We have people yeah, in the that, room that, they can hire. Patty, <laughs> that, that does sound a lot like the live view truck. Yeah, uh, did, did you want to did you want to comment on on how you've kind of put your truck together, some of the equipment that's in there? And For sure. I think I think they're mo most interested in the multicam setup and with the live view device you can only put one camera in at a time, but you can switch seamlessly in between cameras. When you go from HDMI to, S to SDI, you need to ready the unit up again. But in that readying, you don't lose any downtime on the air. It's a, it looks seamless to all of the fans. Um, but basically, my suggestion is to keep the live view at whatever device you're using, keep it mobile, and then be able to transfer to wherever your camera outputs are. Sure. Um, and just plug and play wherever you go. And we have we have had some customers, uh, you know, use switchers in in trucks as well, where they have GoPros and whatnot mounted inside, you know, or outside of a vehicle, and then they'll run all of that into a switcher. And I'm assuming Switcher Studio would be a, you know, a yeah, fantastic it, fit for that. Switcher well, Studio is an entry point for using iPhones and iPads. You can do multiple cameras. They do have to be on the same local network, so you can do that via a hotspot or bring your own router. Um, and we've even seen some kind of hybrid setups where users are running Ethernet between cameras and have others connected over access points. So uh, you can always build a bigger network if you're doing wireless multicam video. Um, then you can move into TriCaster, Wirecast, vMix solutions um, on, on the high end. And I know with Switchboard, um, you said from the cloud you can switch between sources. So yep. that might be another workflow. Uh, lots of different options. And um, yeah, it's not a one size fits yeah. all. Sure, I would, sure. I would, even, I would even make the advice too. There's the case of you don't have to be producing everything on site from the truck. The truck could literally be yeah. your means of getting around and transporting your camera and That's your. A good point. Yeah, and right. if you're using a you know wireless bonded Bring encoder, mm -hmm. because with everything being in the cloud, it basically could be sent to anywhere. So you could be in your truck in the Rocky Mountains, but you've got your graphics studio back in Iowa, um, and you could be wireless to transmitting. Doing your while switching camera feeds, and you know, adding yep. your graphics, doing all of that at home, in real time, and still going live, and that greatly reduces your costs. Well, it's super scalable. You can run it as a single man operation, or you can run it as a, a five man team, which is the, another great feature. I just want to jump in here and a little bit of a shameless plug. I have this group on Facebook called Live Streaming Managers, and if you want to ask these questions, not just now but throughout kind of the rest of the time Facebook continues to exist. Uh, if you want to talk Whoa! about that. I don't know. That's true. That's <laughs> truth know. right there. That's truth. I, I Hashtag know. Facebook is over party. It's Wait, coming. They're not going anywhere. Mark Zuckerberg, you won't go down. We love Facebook. I mean, to I, a degree, I love Facebook. To well, while my Facebook group continues it's to It's a limited exist. love. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> No, but in Facebook Group, it's actually a really good place to have these conversations um, about you know, kinds of equipment, ways to work. Uh, we talk about LiveView a lot in there. Um, Switcher, I, Rudy, you're also in there all the time. Um, so all of these kind of different platforms, it's a great place to talk to the people who create them, talk with people who constantly use them. Um, so if you're and interested in these questions. And referrals if you need to help and outsource. I think that's yeah. one of the greatest things, too. I mean, we found great people on there that we were able to yeah. use and leverage because, again, there's... The stuff you want, massive production level, but sometimes you just want some quick help. And it's really awesome to find people from all walks of life and all levels of experience. And that is a really great forum for that. Live stream managers? Yeah. What is yeah. It? Live streaming managers. Yeah. Uh, or live stream. Just search live stream managers. It's a good community. Yeah. It is. There's it's, no it's shame in any question there, yeah. too, which is what I like. I don't, I don't ever have to be embarrassed about If you have a question, something. someone else has, has probably been there. Yeah. 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 Um, it's good to lean on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Joyce, uh, what else you got? Uh, what else? So Jim is a 68-year-old streamer just starting out. How can he get in with a you know a limited budget, basically? So what what are some so, of the you know, first problems? You know, I'll, I'll kind of branch out from here. So so you know, limited budget is one of those things. You know, just to get going, you can always just start with your iPhone or your Android phone. Uh, you can use the um, 
you know, the, the Facebook app. You can use the YouTube app. There's other, you know, apps out there. Uh, we're launching our, our very own solo app as well uh, here in the next uh, month or so. So, we, you know, you'd be able to use that and, and use our platform. Uh, you know, from there, there's, there's obviously multiple levels. And, and Nick, did you want to, you know, comment on, on a couple of things with Switcher? If you have an iPhone or an iPad, uh, you can try Switcher Go. It's our free solution. It allows you to use the built-in camera, and you can add up to four photos or videos that you could switch between. Uh, so it, it gives a lot of flexibility to start switching. Uh, if you want to move beyond the built-in camera, you can actually replace that with another iPhone or iPad. So using our multi-cam function, you could frame a camera across the room and control it from your pocket. Uh, Switcher Studio starts at $29 a month or $300 a year, and that allows you to do up to nine cameras with iPhones wow. and iPads, uh, graphics, screen sharing. Uh, we, we've had some people do hacks where they're using drones and DJI, so it's very flexible and you can do as much or as little as you want, starting with just one device to just finding someone else with an iPhone or iPad. Um, and there's, there's other solutions once you get into hardware um, and, and if you're doing computers and capture cards and, uh, or a dedicated hardware um, switcher like NewTek, uh, you can always work your way up. Blackmagic has some you know, inexpensive web presenters as well um, that you know, are, are available on the market as, as hardware switchers. And then take the output, you run it into an, you know, a streaming encoder and, and you can push that off to uh, you know, the switchboard platform and, and yeah. really engage a, a very wide audience. I think the cool thing is with just encoding and, and live streaming, like, like Nick was saying, it's you have the different levels, right? You can start off small and then kind of work your way up and you know, gradually grow and, and you know, create your workflow, right? Don't yeah. start and try to boil the ocean, right? Yeah. Learn one thing at a time and continue to work your way up and there's great products out there that allow yeah. you to do that. In fact, uh, I do suggest too for them and anyone else that's in a similar position, uh, to check out live streaming pros, um, yeah. what yeah. they've got are some great. Some of it's free. Uh, a lot of it's free. Uh, they have weekly shows. All they do is teach you the beginning, middle, and the growth of live yeah. live mobile streaming. Yeah. So uh, before you invest in equipment, you can learn a little bit about how to even approach developing your content, developing yeah. your audience. I think the recommendation would be even what Rudy and I were saying is. Test, you know. Yeah. There's no, there's no shame in deleting afterwards. Right. Uh, you know, you do but have to figure out what your content is, what your sweet spot is, grow your audience, and then let your equipment and your your product grow from there. And you do bring up a very important point about content. I mean, if you don't have interesting content to deliver, if you're not, you know, telling a, a different story, it, it's you're not going to have the audience there, right? So you can, you could go out and spend a million dollars and have, you know, a 53 foot. End to end, a unit, right. best equipment in the world. But you know, if if you don't have an interesting story to tell and, and an interesting way of telling that story, it sort of gets lost. Right. Nobody it's, likes it's, watching a potato. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun to go make a wish list, and um, and and there's a lot of gear out there that can yeah. really enhance what you can do. But if you flip that and think about what your goals are, we all have stories to tell. We all talk. I mean, this is an yeah. off the cuff conversation right, right now. We do this every day. And just going behind the scenes and sharing your experience, documenting, um, I think that's something that we've seen a lot with live video, especially as it's shifted to social platforms and, and you don't have to go pay thousands of dollars to a CDN. Um, that we can all bring value and don't be afraid to try it and to go out there, but think about what success looks like for you. Um, set a goal or an outcome and, and if you start the conversation there, it doesn't matter what equipment you have, share your story. Can I, 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 cannot, oh. I was just going to say, I cannot think of a more amazing way to kind of wrap up and almost summarize the, the, the show today. I know, Good job, Nick. I know there's like <laughs> a zillion and one questions still on there. Um, we will continue to answer them, continue to post them. We are on again tomorrow night. And we actually have a ton of time to do even more in-depth roundtable uh, Q&A session live. Um, but we will actually go back and answer all the stuff on Facebook as well. So uh, I really love the fact that you all have hung tough and have stayed and listened. I guess it's a testament to all the guests and all the great stuff they've been sharing. Um, but I want to throw it back to Joyce because I know we were running a little bit of a contest. I don't know if we selected at random anyone you want to announce that's going to get some cool stuff from Live View in the mail. We did. We've uh -huh. got three lucky winners. 
One is Eric Rodriguez from the uh, city of Peoria, Arizona, who sent us some questions in advance. So he'll be getting a little live you swag bag. Nice. Uh, maybe the hat pad he's wearing, <laughs> uh, maybe some other goodies. We've also got Daniel Wright, who is a hopefully hanging tough still in our stream and Jean Greenwood. So we'll uh, we'll PM you and get some uh, uh, some cool stuff out to you. So thanks thank for tuning you guys. in. Thank you guys for tuning and in. Thank you and to my model. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for all the questions, the engagement and staying watching us uh, during our behind the scenes at CES. Uh, be sure to tune in to our Facebook page because we'll be sharing other folks that are going to be going live from the studio. Uh, uh, I believe Paul, if he's still here, will be doing a little Stream Geeks, maybe, uh, live from our studio here tomorrow. But we will be back here again at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Pacific. This, uh, pac <laughs> what is wrong with you, me? You always forget it's that. Good, it's because I want to go to bed. Is really the wheels, the wheels <laughs> I'm tired. Um, We're all East Coast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't forget, all throughout the day, our very own Ben Ratner will be going live from all around the convention center again. He had some great stuff today. Uh, ben, I don't know if you want to save a little wave goodbye and a little tease, but you're going to be, no. Uh, he'll be at the convention center tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be nicer weather. Maybe we'll do some stuff outside as well. But thank you all. Uh, and I want to thank everybody who came by and is here today and tonight and spent time with us. Uh, and I just really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Enjoy the view of Vegas as we roll out. I think the fountains just stopped, but don't worry. We'll share some more stuff. Take care. Happy streaming and happy CES 2018. Bye. Bye. Yay. Bye.